in addition to 3D Buzz uh, concept art MMO development, yours truly, Derek T. Stevens, at my side. As always, the man in the bunny slippers and cowboy hat, Mr. Nelson. He's doing well today. I think he's off to get some coffee. I myself am a bit under the weather, a little fever because I'm that hot. Yeah, so um, I will try to be my best to be chipper, but no way do we cancel anything unless we're set on fire or jump out of an airplane and our chute is not open. So uh, with that said, we've got uh, a lot of exciting things going on <clears throat> for the MMO development. Uh, Nelson has got everything up on the MMO uh, page for uh, you to peruse at. Um, all the, the design and developments and concepts from almost a year and a half ago, they're up. And the best way and the only way right now to differentiate between, uh, I guess, way back way art, like what you see on your screen here, and uh, the new stuff that we're doing is there will be a 2013 tag in front of it. Right now we have a weapons development slot. Uh, we have uh, character development. Uh, we have magic. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Mr. Ray who's going to share some awesome stories with us later on today, uh, or tonight, to uh, just kind of tell you what we're thinking of. There's a punk kid who I love to like throw a water balloon full of. Anyway, his name's Tyler. Tyler Curtis. Um, he pointed out to me. He's like, ah, stuff sounds a little too like Avatar. And, you know, I stopped and thought, like, you're right. It is kind of like Avatar-ish. So I, immediately I got defensive and said, they don't do this earth and fire and water stuff. He said, well, they kind of do. I'm like, crap, you're right. So Mr. Ray, who, who is a professional writer, awesome guy, uh, he and I got to talk with Steve Curtis as well, um, talked about how I would like to have the, the setting influenced by the Incas and the Mayas and the Aztecs. That way we can have some intrigue and some adventures amongst all our alien races. Like, you know, if you look at World of Warcraft, you have the Horde and the Undead. Uh, they'll fight from time to time. You'll have to do, go to another encampment, and you'll have to uh, share experience and team up. And that's kind of the, what I was thinking with uh, this tribal sort of system that is developing as far as writing goes. Um, and there's a lot more that I'm let Mr. Ray explain. Uh, right now, as soon as Mr. Nelson gets back, I'm going to see if Mr. Ray is in here and he can take his screen and uh, start sharing his ideas. However, some other exciting news because I hate hinged legs. I thought about starting a website, IHateHingedLegs.com, ran by yours truly, Derek Stevens. These hinged legs right here, they look pretty cool. It's just, uh, I think they're overdone. Uh, I don't want them to be confused with the Dernai from uh, World of Warcraft. I don't want them to be influenced any from uh, this Halo aspect. Uh, they're pretty popular right now. So, And the other thing, if we're going to develop this MMO, <clears throat> we're going to have to utilize tools wherever we can. And oddly enough, I was working for Sega probably about four months ago developing this, this kangaroo robot thing on purpose because they had hinged legs. They were doing a new dynamics or animation engine. Uh, so this is not widely available to the script. I guess, walk cycles with hinged leg beams. So that's another reason why we're not going to have hinged legs. That way we can use different walk cycles that will be easier to obtain and tweak on the fly. We're still sticking with the three, <laughs> excuse me, the two fingers and the thumb here. Um, we've had some 3D art animation done that uh, we'll share with you later on about what the, the hand may actually look like. Because, again, I want these guys to have retractable sort of claws. That's cheesecake. That's a big dude. And, obviously, I did not load up my uh, my hand drawing. Well, anyway, we'll talk about her. Miss Nelson, you back yet? Well, I know, Derek. I'm drinking coffee. That's quite all right. We'll go ahead and delve into this. Again, this is just a fun, quick sketch. wanted to play with hair because uh, we were talking. I think it was Mr. Wolf Knightley brought up a brilliant point. With hair, they, they, they do kind of look like elven chicks with like a Marge Simpson hairdo. And I, I kind of agree it's not set in stone right now, but if we can keep them bald, it gives them more of an alien-esque look. Also, maybe we have like a tuft of hair sort of coming from the back or the side or something like that, instead of having all this hair confusing them with funky-looking elves. Um, again, I just wanted to draw something cute and sexy, doing some sort of tattoos and tribal work right over here. Again doing the two toes, but the thing that we've decided on, let me get my brush stroke right here, bring it down, if you guys know Nightcrawler from X-Men at all, this last toe here, 
let me, we'll actually have a little grip like this. That way we have a really huge uh, bone attribute, not bone attribute, it's able to curl around almost like a bird's clawed foot for uh, stability on branches and trees, especially if we're going to be making them jump up and down and do cool stuff in that particular environment. All right, so how big do these guys get? Well, no, I mean, uh, they come in all shapes, sizes, and forms. Um, again, I was kind of picturing this kind of like the bouncer guy, you know. You can come in the club. You got the different ridge lines in the hair here, different colors uh, for stones. Uh, again, tribal tattoos, quick down and dirty artwork. Let's come back to here. Right now on 3dbuzz.com, you can go there under uh, body template 02 because there's a couple others floating around. But what I encourage you guys to do, literally, let's find, find my buttons here. As I come over here, let's move this out of the way. Move this out of the way. I can literally create another layer on top of it. And then from here, there's several ways we can do it. Let me get my opacity is 100 percent Let's just do this. Duplicate layer. That's what I should have done the first time. Duplicate layer second time and from here in the middle I'm going to create another layer this here is going to be a multiply layer like this so when we're up here that's a little bit darker I'll do something kind of a fun bluish dark color to differentiate what's going on between everything else here but the reason why she has all these arms is she's not Shiva, like the god of death or whatever Shiva is. And no offense to any Hindu out there, I just don't know my gods over there that well. But you can literally take this body form here, trace the outline through here, bring it down as such here. Then you get to choose what arm you want. Let's just do... this here like that. Do a quick head. Again, this is just to prove a point how easy it is. And then what you guys can do is go build your character up. I want to see armor. I want to be able to see tattoos. Uh, uh, Sid is, Sid Curtis is the head of our department for character designs. And she'll be handing out assignments and that's the other thing I really, really want to talk about. We need team members. If you like character art, we'll hook you up with Sid. If you like weapons and environment, I can hook you up with Steve. If you want to help write, Ray can be your man. Uh, we've got all sorts of people who are leads right now. We need more. And again, this is going to be a long-term project. It's not a run sort of thing, not a sprint. It's walking with a backpack and a walking stick. But with that said, okay, hold on, let me... Clear this out, clear this out. And from here, with minimal amount of work just tracing, you have a basic outline of a body without going in and doing all the other detail. But what's cool is you can mix and match the arms however you want. So I encourage you to go to 3dbuzz.com, look at Body Template 2, and then you can place your characters and their designs in particular in that, that category. All right, Mr. Nelson, you back yet? Yep. Awesome. So what I want to do is kind of open up with uh, the artist, lead artist right now. I want to save Mr. Ray for last because uh, I think the story will be able to tie in. You know what? I scratch that. Let's put Mr. Ray up first and explain about the rocks and carbon life forms and this and that. Then the artist can talk about their, their thought pattern before and after. So if Mr. Ray is available, if you can take Mr. Ray. And he is unmuted. Sorry, I was muted when I said that. And uh, Mr. Nelson, you do your thing while I go get some uh, things taken care of. Awesome. Okay, can people hear me? Uh, I might be having some mic troubles right now. Hello? Hello? Hi. Okay. Um, Ray, you are unmuted. Ah, so people can hear me now? 
Okay. Uh, I put some of this up on the uh, MMO um, forum. Uh, so if you want to uh, read a version of it, you can go there to see it. But essentially, uh, I was trying to think of how come there was magic on our alien planet, but not on Earth. And I remembered reading a number of years ago that technically silicon can take the place of carbon in creating life. Now, on our planet, it was only carbon-based, but the idea is that on this planet, both silicon and carbon life evolved together. The silicon life is not intelligent, but it is sentient. In other words, it uh, can, in some instances, is no, uh, no more aware than plants. In other instances, it might be uh, have the intelligence of a dog or an ox or uh, an, any of the different animals that we humans uh, cajole into doing things for us. Uh, and for the aliens, it's the same thing. They can get the crystals, the rocks, to do things for them if they play by their nature. So in other words, your dog will turn on you if you are, uh, are not nice to it. But if you are nice to it, you can get it to herd sheep, uh, get the newspaper, do all kinds of things. You can get an ox to pull a cart, or he can try and uh, put a horn in your gut, depending on how you're treating it. So the relationship between the uh, carbon-based aliens and the silicon life forms is along that line. So they don't have total control uh, they have to learn how to guide the silicon. Now, how do the silicon creatures function? Well, obviously they can't move around very much, uh, but they, they function the same way that we use silicon in our world, except our silicon isn't alive. They function at the quantum level, which means that they're capable of uh, manipulating matter and energy in some fairly direct ways. And to us, this technology appears to be magic because we have no concept uh, of how you could link yourself with a living silicon creature mentally and get that creature to move uh, a stone wall uh, half a mile from you I suggested no. midichlorians, and Steve said he'd slap me, so uh, we won't go that route. <laughs> uh, or uh, kill an enemy, uh, divert a river. Uh, so the, that's the concept. Uh, now, these uh, silicon-based uh, life forms can take many different forms, and I've tried to come up with an idea that can work uh, with a lot of different stories, and, and there are a lot of directions this can be taken. For example, uh, again in the quantum area, uh, there's a thing called um, entanglement, uh, which essentially means that when particles get created and go in different directions, somehow they have a connection with each other, and that connection works faster than the speed of light. And matter of fact, this Einstein hated this idea, but he couldn't refute it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he said, you know, God doesn't play dice, and he said, it's a spooky distance, and as I say, he hated this. But it is part of quantum uh, physics. Uh, that means that since everything started with almost a single particle at the Big Bang, many people believe, every particle has some kind of an attachment to every other particle. Therefore, what we would call sympathetic magic here in our world and our fantasy stories is quite real there. So, for example, maybe part of the magic we come up with in order to gain power over an enemy, you have to go steal something from them. So you have something that was uh, they touched or something that was a part of them a hair or fingernail clipping. 
I'm sure that could be worked into a game. Uh, you could also use it as a way that they could teleport. Uh, if they touch something, they know where that came from. You could even have the aliens end up on Earth if they touched an Earth object and it was made in Detroit, they might be able to actually go to Detroit. Maybe you could have a counter invasion of our planet by them. There are a lot of different ways you can take this. Um, and I, you know, I, I've only scratched the surface, but uh, as I said, I tried to come up with a, a plausible, actual technical way that these folks could have magic that appeared to us the way our traditional magic would be. And you can uh, do earth, air, fire, and water in that if you want to. You can, you can go many, many different ways. So at any rate, that's that basic part of the story. Um, I don't know, Derek, do you want me to also talk about the caste system that I thought about? Yeah, I do, because I really feel that will uh, tie into some of what the artists are doing right now, some of the things I've asked them to, uh, to come up with. Um, and again, because, uh, and it is, it is true, my, my vision was very narrow-minded in the beginning. I wanted to, to do X, Y, and Z, and it was like James Cameron's uh, Avatar thing. So uh, I think you were able to rescue it. I really like that there is foundations in magic based in reality, so it will make it that much more cooler. Uh, from what I've understood and, and read and been taught, that you know you can have one huge leap of faith that there are aliens out there. Okay, we're not really for sure. That's your leap of faith. Then everything else to make a cohesive story needs to be based on some sort of reality. No more huge leaps of faith. So I really love how that's tied in. That was great. Yes, and if you could please explain about your ideas for the cast system with a disclaimer that right now, I mean, we're tending to move towards this direction. There's no right, there's no wrong. Uh, what we want to do is tap into a market that are mainly women, 46% of all gamers or women right now, and with some of the ideas, I think will be very appealing to women. I know as a dude, I like to play women characters because I like to look at the little bottoms run around as opposed to a dude. So with that, I'm going to shut up now. Mr. Ray, take it. Okay, and, and let me emphasize <coughs> that these are just ideas. The, the whole silicon uh, carbon uh, life form thing is just an idea, but I think it can work. Uh, and uh, Derek asked me to think about what kind of a caste system would you have among these tribes? It's tribal. Uh, as he pointed out, it may well be a matriarchal society. Uh, we were talking about this last night, and in the um, pre-Arthurian days in Britain, it was a, a, a matriarchal society because they hadn't figured out what about fatherhood yet. So what they knew was that the mother was the source of the child. And so all of the lineage went through the mother until one day uh, they got invaded and uh, some folks came along and explained to them, well, you see, there's this father thing and uh, men being bigger and stronger, they sort of took over. But you can have a matriarchal society uh, and we've had a number of them on the earth uh, over the years. But at any rate, caste system. At the bottom, you probably have to have something like a slave or a serf or an indentured person. But even this person would have some very modest magical powers just to do uh, normal tasks. Uh, I don't think any gamer would want to be a slave, but it's possible that if they screwed up enough, they might become a slave and have to work their way out of that. What could that be, for example? They might try to uh, uh, take over someone's keep and lose, and they now become slaves to the, uh, the person they were trying to overthrow. One possibility to work in to the, uh, into the mix. How could they leave slavery? Well, every time they do something, they get a little bit of pay, so they could buy their way out eventually. Um, they could save their master or do something heroic. That might get them, their master might grant them their freedom. Uh, or maybe they can kill their master, then they can escape. I mean, I'm, I'm evil, I can't help it, sorry. 
they could possibly do that. They could also make a deal with one of their master's enemies <coughs> to betray the master and the enemy buy them out of slavery. So that would be cool because what you're talking about is choice. And I would love to be – I don't know how hard that would be, Nelson, for you to, to program in like playing a – a great game with PvP, and then almost like a choose your own adventure book where you have choices. I'm very much a choice guy. I want you to be able to forge in your own destiny. But I mean, we can talk about all like game mechanics and stuff like that later. But you're, continue. You got some great ideas there, Mr. A. Next up is the middle class, and my thought was maybe new players start there. Now, part of the middle class would be foot soldiers. And uh, they w everything is in guilds, as I'm imagining this. And the foot soldiers are also in guilds. So you have the sort of self-contained platoons, or uh, whatever you want to call them, where perhaps the people in that elect someone who would be like a master sergeant in our world. Uh, I don't know all the different military ranks, so I'd be, this is just a concept. Uh, and then those guys would would follow warriors, and warriors would ultimately follow lords. So you'd have a hierarchy like that. The middle class would also include merchants and farmers and weapons makers. Now, I don't know if gamers would want to play those roles if uh, I'm not a gamer myself. Uh, you could make those interesting roles. Uh, you could even have, for example, a weapons maker could make a deal with your enemy and make a weapon that blows up in your hands or doesn't work. The farmer could poison your food. There are lots of ways that the merchant could sell you bad merchandise or they could come to your rescue and save you. So you could work that in or you could just make them essentially um, AIs. You know, you go to the farmer right. to get this. You go to uh, an AI. Uh, weapons maker to get your weapons. I guess there's. Some I think it'd be really interesting though, because I'm sure there may be a game out there like that. But how interesting would it be as as a gamer and you know, twiddle dee and twiddle dum over there killing farmers or or doing something stupid to their livestock, just killing cows randomly. How cool would it be for the consequences to say you have a farmer go like, all right, one day, buddy, I'm gonna get you back. I think that would be so cool. Uh, well, you know, I, again, I'm just saying there is a, there's a middle class, and maybe that's where we start. <clears throat> My concept uh, for part of this is that the players create the higher uh, uh, the, the higher people, at least get them to start by electing them. So, in other words, the foot soldiers elect the head of their particular guild, and there are different groups of foot soldiers. If you actually have players doing merchants and farmers and weapons makers and so on, they would each have their own guild. And again, their leadership would be elected uh, and could be changed. The next layer up would be the warriors. These are not just foot soldiers. These are, pro these are professional, highly skilled uh, fighters. Uh, and there are, you can have all kinds of sub layers here. Uh, straight up killers with specialties. You can have commanders who collect and organize groups of guilds. They are more management. Uh, this is an area that I think is well uh, established in the gaming world, so I really didn't spend a lot of time trying to think about details in it, because I think that's, that's already been done fairly well. I could be wrong about that. I'm not a gamer, but I have that impression. Mm. Uh, then at the top of the heap, you have two groups. One group are the mages, healers, shaman, whatever you'd like to call them. They have limited killing power, but they master the silicon creatures. They are the best at magic. They can heal. They can bring down walls. They can divert a river, destroy a crop, uh, throw up... Um, uh, a, a temporary shelter that uh, will be gone the next morning. You, you can let your imagination run wild as to the, the, the kinds of skills you can give to a shaman. Now, my thought would be that these guys, anyone in this, I'm thinking, can be demoted and ultimately go all the way back to slave if they screw up. 
maybe that's not something you can work into the game, but that was part of my thought. Well, we, we can visit it and we can talk about game mechanics. You know, how would that look? What would that look like? Because uh, we talked a little bit last night. The, the last thing I wanted to do is have some 10-year-old punk kid, you know, telling me that you're demoted. You're going to slavery and I need, I'm going to take all your stuff because I'm, I'm an a-hole. No, I, I don't want that. So I don't want people to worry that that's not going to happen. We're just visiting ideas right now. Then later on we'll discuss how we could do that in game mechanics. Uh yeah, and so that, that may be part of the game. I think it would be interesting, as I said earlier on, if you try something really outrageous and it doesn't work, there probably should be consequences, and maybe those consequences are other than uh, you lose a couple of health points. Maybe you actually have your, at least for some short period of time, you are forced into a menial role because of what you did. But anyway... Definitely. For the healers and shaman types, if this was possible, I would think that it would require a combined effort. You couldn't have one player demote them, no matter how powerful that player was. It would take at least two fairly, uh, uh, fairly uh, advanced lords. And if you worked, every time you demote somebody, again, if that's part of the gameplay, it costs you to do that. So it would be uh, quite a cost in health points or whatever for someone to demote uh, a shaman or a healer. That would be pretty tough, but they could spread it out. So let's say it takes two or more lords to do it, but maybe if you got six lords to agree to it, each of them gets one sixth of the hit, and it makes it a lot easier to get rid of a bad wizard if you need to. Again, a possibility. At the top, you do have the lords. They have high magic powers in combat. They are, the warriors uh, choose these guys to be their leaders in the battles. Uh, these are people that, uh, except for the, the shaman, they can kill just about anybody. One of the things you might want to put in the game is that down at the warrior and uh, foot soldier level, you can't kill your own people. Lord can do that. It may cost him, but he should be able to do that. So these are the people that build up the keep. Maybe a part of the way they get there is being elected by the warriors, and maybe a part of the way they get there is amassing land and gold or whatever. Uh, you know, if you don't want it to be gold, you could make it... Uh, a certain type of crystal or, or um, a certain type of stone uh, that gives you more and more uh, power. But at any rate, um, that's sort of bare bones what I had in mind. Uh, as I said at the beginning, strictly a set of ideas, uh, completely open to change. But uh, that was what I was asked to do, so that's what I came up with. I think there's some really good ideas here, and here's what we're going to do. We have about maybe 10 minutes left before the first break. So uh, what I want to do, Mr. Nelson, is uh, have people raise their hands if they have any ideas or comments. And again, people be nice and polite. Don't bitch, complain, moan, and groan, or be silly. Uh, we're all civil. Uh, Mr. Ray put himself on a limb, and I think he's doing a brilliant job. And after break, we're going to come back, and we're going to talk to our lead artists. And, tell, and they're going to tell you what they're working on, show you pictures, and they're going to tell you what we need for the MMO. So, Mr. Nelson, does anybody have any their hands up? All right, go ahead and raise your hand. Anybody? Anybody? Um... Yeah, I don't see any hands. Well, they must love your ideas, Mr. A, like I do. Then, uh, if there's no hands up, we'll go ahead and take a five-minute break, come back, and trudge forward. Is that cool with everybody? Yeah, sounds good. All right, we'll see you guys in five. All righty. Hey, welcome back from break, everybody. I hope it went as well as mine did. I got, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, got some more water to drink. I got myself focused back on what we need to be focusing upon. Mr. Ray just gave us a great recap of some uh, some initial ideas for the world. And right now I want to bring in uh, the oldest member of uh, the team so far. <laughs> oldest guy, Steve Curtis. If Steve can raise his hand, and he's going to slap me for a second time when I see him in person. But uh, 
Steve, are you there? He is unmuted. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, man, how you doing, dude? All hanging out, tired, but here and rocking. Roger that. I figured if you could get up in like a couple hours, go to work all day, I could just, you know, basically I have my girl's little potty seat. I'm sitting and doing this broadcast with my bunny slippers <laughs> and cowboy hat. So, I mean, I can do that, right? You can do that. I can do that. So I probably shouldn't tell you that I was so tired that I walked in today and said I was taking a vacation day tomorrow. I'm going to take a sick day tomorrow. <laughs> so if you guys hear any music playing, uh, that's because my little girl's potty seat plays. Anyway, Steve. Uh, to those who are listening, Steve has uh, decided and actually asked, and he accepted, to uh, take the, the bull by the horns for environment arts and for weapon design. And uh, the leads got to meet last night uh, briefly, and we talked a little bit about what's going on. Excuse me. And I want Steve to be able to share what his ideas and what his weapons and environments are going on and, and introduce his team and give his team credit. Because we got a, we have a good amount of people working on this already, but we have more room. If you're creative and passionate about games, we want you. You don't have to be the, the best artist in the world. You don't have to be that way. But if you've got some passion, ideas, and a hard worker, then roger that. Let's do it. So, Steve, with no further ado or fanfare, take it over, sir. All righty. Um, uh, do we have uh, Donald in here tonight with us? Did he make it? Uh, surreal Algacard? Uh, I see him in Alucard? I see him in Buzznet. Uh, what's his name? Do you you want him on the? Yeah, it'd be Donald. Um, he's he's on my team, and he sent me some work, and it would be really great if he could leap in and talk about that. Alrighty, and you are unmuted, Donald. Hey, hey, man, Alucard. That's Dracula spelled backwards. I never caught that before. Very cool. Yes. Yep. I'm a geek. Anyway, Steve, <laughs> take over. Um, Nelson, can you pull me up? You want me to jump into? Yeah. Please. I give you a dollar to see that happen. You have been jumped into. Here we go. Alrighty, so uh, I set it up so we can look at all Donald's stuff first here, uh, since he got a lot more done this week than I did. Go, Donald. Amen, brother. <laughs> Hoorah. All right. Uh, the first little thumbnail I drew here uh, is like a little oasis in the middle of uh, sandy beach outside of a forest or something. I was kind of trying to get a feel for what kind of environment we needed. And, uh, yeah, so lots of sand. <laughs> well, uh, tying into uh, Donald, or no, sorry, uh, Ray's story again, because we're doing this tribal thing. We can have our aliens in all sorts of different environments. I'm still rooting for the underwater environment. I think it'll be awesome. But we're not going to box ourselves into just Avatar Forest, which will get boring after a while. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, Donald did a really great job of keeping some nice tight color palettes and giving us quite a few different looks. I was really, really happy with what I saw. So uh, I'll just move these things down here a bit. And... All right. This one, I was kind of playing in with the crystals, putting them up here and there. And uh, I was thinking kind of a volcano maybe a cave under the volcano you could work in a boss or something like that on top of a cliff lots of uh rocks keeping with the idea of rocks and the silicone being you know all that stuff well done mr vlad tempest <laughs> and, and as we go all through all Donald's stuff, the other thing I really liked, which I had really made no mention to him, was he has a lot of verticality in his environments, which is great in gaming. Gamers love to go up and down. They don't like to just stroll across flat fields. So. Yeah. yeah. Good point, sir. And I was thinking on this one, a lot of the work previously has been kind of Earth-like, you know, all the minerals and stuff. So I figured I'd change up the sky a little bit. Ooh. This could be something that happens, you know, once a year or once a month. Maybe the magic inside of the world kind of reflects the light differently off the ozone. Has yeah, maybe, clouds. Maybe they don't have thunderstorms. Maybe they have firestorms. Yeah, stuff like that. The silhouette in the foreground can be a rusty <laughs> shack or something like that. Perhaps the minstrels can discover this on this, this particular island, and then it happens once a month, and we can name it the minstrel cycle. 
perfect color. Wow, <laughs> wow where did that come from? <laughs> we'll edit that out. Sorry. I like and, the idea, I, though. And I do have to say, uh, when I got these from Donald, the, the preview was very, very small. And at first glance, I went, oh, pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> but I like that idea, Donald, that instead of the blue skies, and I like that. that I really think that if we, again, going to the color theory, if we have a, the red skies, it could really, really pop our aliens out, depending on mm -hmm. what color palette we use on them. And yeah, it's not been done. Make them a little different. Yep. And this one, I was kind of going for a sandy dune area, maybe a temple, uh, going with the Mayan or Aztec uh, architecture or anything like that. And this could be another, I guess, severe weather being really, really hot, sticking with uh, that heat element. And... You can have certain flags flying depending on which faction you want. Uh, it could be like a little control base or something for PvP. Cool. It could be just about anything. I like it. Very good ideas, dude. Very good. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. Okay. This, oh, one this is I, my favorite. Yeah. Uh, this one's my favorite, too. Floating rocks or really anything floating in the, up above these cliffs. And uh, on that one cliff, it could be hieroglyphics or something when maybe a certain person looks at it, a high lord or whatever can only see it. Or That's know, a hell of an idea for a quest. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe you have to gather certain materials and then fly to this location. I was thinking maybe a forest down there or it could be a water area. So you could dive under or something like that. Very good ideas. Love them. And Derek, just for you. <laughs> yes. Underwater scenes. Rock on! Yeah. I like this one because I kind of drew a little figure in the background. It could be a giant fish or <laughs> it could be a player. <laughs> I like giant fish. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, Star Wars when Jar Jar Binks and them went through. Underwater. Steve will slap you if you say that name again. I promise you he will. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was midichlorians. It was specifically that that's going to okay. be slapped. Yeah. Misa say fine. Okay, that could get you slapped, too. Okay, that's what I thought. It was like he wrote three three great movies, and then he talked to the writer from Twilight and wrote three more. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so depressed as I'm a Jedi. Wham! <laughs> and I'm I was sorry. thinking, for the uh, underwater scene... The seaweed could actually maybe be used as armor for the uh, underwater Ethereans. Ooh, that's which, a very nice point. Which tied in with one of Sid's idea with the hair, where it was used as camouflage, which is great. Yeah, perfect for that. Very cool. Uh, this next one, I really like underwater caves. They just they have so much atmosphere and everything. Well, who and, doesn't? Yeah, of course. And this could be uh, where that huge worm lives or, you know, whatever. And I made it a little blurry to keep that underwater feel. You know, you kind of get disorientated and everything underwater. And I, I really like what you're doing, dude. I mean, you're going balls to the wall, of all sorts of different ideas. And this is the, like we need. And again, the disclaimer is we're not getting paid for it, okay? None of yeah. it yet. But we're going to get our names out there. We're learning about workflow pipelines, and we're learning how to do teamwork. Uh, I invite a lot more people to, to participate, and I hope they take us up on it. Donald, Mr. Flad Tempest Alucard, brilliant <laughs> jobs. Yeah, <laughs> Donald. And, and I'll, for anybody listening, and I'll say the same thing I said to Donald when I first spoke with him, and he certainly has far exceeded that, but I really don't care if all you can draw is, st if you can give me a couple of stick figures and a written notation, and I understand your idea, perfect. You know, when it comes time to do the art, we'll find a way to get the art done. That It's the idea that matters most. So, Yeah, and uh, this one also ties into the stones as well. Maybe this is where everyone gets their stones underwater instead of having to travel to the land and get them, you can get them right here underwater. Beautiful. Well done, sir. This one was one of my favorites. Well, yeah, uh, I was thinking of an underwater, like, village or something when I'd done this, and you get the silhouettes of kind of tribal 
architecture, maybe a little bridge or something going across. And yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, that was the stuff that Donald gave me, and he kicked my ass. So we'll move on to my stuff now, and I'll be embarrassed. Oh, yeah. uh, thanks again, Donald, man. Keep it coming. You have been just rocking. I, I had a terribly, terribly busy week, and I think you have saved the environment art department. <laughs> and Love it. <laughs> well done, sir. Proud of you. Thank you. Wait, wait, Mr. Steve, are you going to show weapons or environment stuff? Yes. Both? Because <laughs> I don't know if we should open up to any questions if you're going to like skip from environment to weapons. Um, uh, I can do a couple environments, and then if we want to do some questions, that's okay. great. And come back however you want to run it. Roger that. Let's see what you got, buddy. All right, so this was one where I was originally thinking, uh, based on some of the stuff Ray said, <laughs> that uh, perhaps we'd have these stone cities that grew out of mountainsides based on uh, them manipulating the uh, magic to uh, get it to move stone and create cities for them. That's a good idea. And then uh, Tyler, who can't be here tonight due to a change in webinar that will not let both of us log in. Uh, through Yeah, so I'm going to have to figure out something there. But um, I was thinking a little bit later, again, based on some of the stuff Ray had thrown out there, that uh, if there was some sort of symbiotic relationship between the uh, silicone life forms and the aliens, that uh, in symbiosis things have to go both ways. So what is the other life form getting from the aliens? And I came up with this idea that maybe uh, the aliens living in and around these forests as they interact with the stones and crystals and stuff like that, um, transfer the spores of these things. And what you end up with is these rock outcroppings and all this stuff growing out of trees and making this huge hive network. That's a very interesting idea. So we threw that out. And uh, from there, I've got a couple basic things for weapons. So if anybody wants to uh, jump in on environments, by all means. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, raise your hand. Steve can handle you. He's a big boy. Especially horizontally. I had to think for a minute on that. All right, so go ahead and raise your hand if you want to. Is that what we're doing? Just jump in somebody else? Yeah, so somebody wants to jump in and comment. All right, so go ahead and or throw ideas. Raise your hands. Anyone? We need the Bon Jovi song. Anybody? At least he didn't say Jane says. Come on, somebody jump in. <laughs> no, I kind of like the Alethian down there. Yeah. Yeah, that's the quickest part of my drive. I'm just, I'm just gonna black him in quick. <laughs> Good old okay. spot blacks. Oh yeah. And, and if you look at my cursor, the little tiny one waving back. Oh, I like it. <laughs> that is cute. Long distance communication. Hey. So, do we have any volunteers, Mr. Nelson? Uh, I don't see anyone with their hands raised. Okay, well, bring on the weapons, Mr. Steve. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, we were talking uh, some of the ideas that um, <clears throat> you had had with uh, the stones and creating energy weapons. I played with that a little bit different direction after talking to Ray, and uh, maybe we end up with uh, some runes or inscriptions on these things, uh, whether they use incantations, whatever we end up going with, and perhaps this little crystal dagger the guy has suddenly extends to become this massive crystal broadsword. Nice. Very nice. I've got an idea on the uh, color changing for these crystals. Maybe once you reach a certain level or something, the crystal will actually change colors depending on maybe the amount of rage the warrior has or whatever. So the more rage, the brighter red it gets or something like that. Just a little aesthetic thing. It's a good idea. It's also a visual cue for the gamer. Like, okay, rage is up. Now I can attack. Okay, it's down. I better, you know, do my thing. Yep. Yeah, I like that. 
we'll have Nilsson handle that. He's he's the age head, smart guy who can program the entire game in like a matter of hours. I keep waiting for him to build me an enterprise, but it hasn't happened yet. You gotta let him sleep sometime. That should only be a few hour project for him. Yeah, uh, you know, I figure I'll be patient. All right, what else you got? All righty, um, come on, come off here. There we go. Um, I was thinking of uh, some sort of shield slash weapon combination. Um, again, powered by crystals, stones might provide heavier armor than the shield actually would. Um, I haven't gotten to drawing them yet, but I was thinking of a alien type tree, uh, much like thorn bushes or something like that here that has these nasty quills. So they can uh, they can put these into their shield and very have a very wicked punching weapon. And uh, if it takes damage, if it breaks down, all they need to do is find the nearest one of those trees, and they can break off a couple quills, stick them back on there. They've got nice. it all fixed up. Um, it also it's tied into crafting as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so replaceable and broken, uh, since they're tree quills, uh, you could have uh, toxic sap effects, uh, temporary paralysis, um, or uh, hallucinations, maybe the inability to control your character very well, making you susceptible to more damage. Yeah. And very things nice. like that. And uh, that's where we got this week over here. Not bad at all. I'm proud of you. Like I said, I know you have like a 40-hour-plus-a-week job, and this can't be a full-time job for anybody. But as we, we get a good team and, and chip away at it, we'll get more work than we'll ever, you know, understand, accomplish in a short amount of time. Absolutely. We'll get it there. We'll get more team members. And, you know, on weeks like this, guys like Donald save me, and I'll be <laughs> awesome and give him credit for doing that and not try and be a, an asshat and steal it for myself or anything. Besides, I don't paint that well, so... You guys All right, know. Steve, on three. <laughs> We're not worthy. We're, We're not, not worthy. worthy. Yay, Donald. Steve, now all I can, see, work. Is, I now all I can see is Alice Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. All right. Do you have any more thoughts? or uh, uh, work? Put your email address, if you can, in the little chatty. I can't see it. But if you're interested in doing environments or uh, – Weapon design. Steve will put his email address in the little chat box thing, and I encourage you to get a hold of him and um, sort you out. Uh, no, Steve won't. But I w but I did post it in the forums under the environmental ah. and weapons thing. My chat thing, for whatever reason, doesn't work. Oh, mercy! I, I I can log in, but it's just blank. I can't see any of those guys. I can't see my own writing. Nothing. Wow. I don't know why. Blank. All right. Clear well, you change your plan. Go to three D. Buzz.com uh, 3D Buzz .com forums. Steve's information is there. We need team members. Steve's a great guy. He won't bite or kill you. He may make fun of you occasionally, like he makes fun of me, but he does it in a loving way. And Donald has survived the first week and a half of production, so well done, sir. Donald, is, Donald has been <laughs> super awesome. Well done. So who do you want next? I'll leave it up to you, Mr. Uh, producer. Who do you want to introduce next? Donald's the only one on my team. Well, okay. Well, then we will switch to uh, his city. <laughs> we could do Donald again. He was that good. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, he was. <laughs> All right. So, hey, is Sid available? <laughs> as we're switching over to Sid, um, I will say, as Ray was talking tonight, every time Ray throws some story stuff out there, it seems like I get one more little gem that I didn't hear before or produces an idea. And, uh, as we were talking about the jumping back and forth between Earth and uh, and uh, this alien planet, I started thinking about uh, the Mayans, the Aztecs, and the crystal skulls and how some of the crystal skulls they found have elongated heads like right. the Elythrians would. And <laughs> maybe that ties into the story. Maybe they did come here once and was like, wow, this is a kind of dead planet. We don't like it. And they bailed. Yeah. Taking my toys and I'm going home. Screw yeah. y'all. That's, that's some good concepts. So we could base it into reality some way. I like that. I'm not for sure about the Crystal Stalls. I've only seen the Indiana Jones movie once, and I thought it sucked. So anyway, well done, both of you gentlemen. I appreciate you. Miss Sid, are you up? But I did tell him about the go-to-meeting thing. Sid, uh, I guess we're just going to jump into her. Hello. 
Sydney. Hi. How you doing, girl? I'm doing pretty good. I'm not as bad as you, but I think I've come down with a cold. Probably oh, give geez. it to me over the the darn internet. Got an internet oh, virus yeah. from me. I'm sure. It's, yeah. I just it's just started today. Minded too. My tummy hurts. Oh, I can't. Anyway, you almost soldier through. Hoorah. Hey, everybody, this is uh, Sydney Curtis. She is brilliant. She is young, and she has a bright future if this is indeed what she chooses to do, which I hope it is. Um, and she's going to be in charge of character development for uh, the Buzz MMO team. So, again, uh, we have all the, the slots set up. I, I checked on it today, and everything was good at 3dbuzz.com if you're interested in characters. And you don't have to draw at a certain level. Like Steve said, if this is a sick person idea and you can throw some notes down that we can decipher, you might have the next coolest, brilliant idea, then we'll hand it off to an artist who can create something visually stunning, like Sid. So, Sid, tell me what's going on here. Um, this one I'm not really actually that happy with. I, I was just, oh, wow, okay. Well, I'm going to ignore that and see what happens. But <laughs> um, I was trying to do, like, some of the higher class look things, and I'm not really too happy with it, but... It Which is funny, because I really, I really liked this one. I like it, too. She's it was like, very funny. alluring. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think it was sexy. Yeah, it was really just messing with colors and clothes and stuff, you know? That's really all I do. But it, well, it really sells a much higher class. It does. That's good. <laughs> She's got large tracts of lands. <laughs> <laughs> no, well done. I like it. And honestly, as an artist, you're never going to be satisfied with anything you do. You might like something for a short amount of time. A lot of times I put stuff on DeviantArt. and I'm like, yeah, it's kick-ass. That's cool. I come back and revisit it for like a week or whatever. I'm like, that kind of yeah. sucks. I should have. Anyway, it's the nature of the beast. What else you got? All right, this one, because you had mentioned, okay, this is going to be annoying, I'm sure. But you had mentioned the idea with one of the characters being a dragon. Uh -huh. And then you asked me about headdresses, and that's pretty much just where this came from. I like that. I love this one. She's beautiful. Definitely looks like a night elf. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can see her flat little nose. She's Beautiful drawing, nice use of color. I love the orange and the reds, the, the hots that you used in this. Then her cool blues. Well done. Thank you. You're quite welcome. This was um, more testing with colors and kind of testing um, different body appearances. Like she's really thin and a lot more exaggerated than some of my beginning drawings. So. Well done. I like the, the subtle Just highlights in her back. Nothing wrong with that. That's what we got to do. I like it. This one's also a little exaggerated, but not quite so much. Oh my gosh! Keep the color color scheme. <laughs> I like the green. But the tattoos. Yeah, I was testing out with the tattoos and stuff. I also like the feet. Yeah, I do too. And this other thing, once uh, as leads we met last night. Not not every, you know not everyone was there. Uh, in the general populace, but we were talking about creating an alphabet or uh, symbols for earth, wire, earth, water, fire, blah, blah, blah. So we can start implementing those on tattoos, and we'll come up with that soon. But I love her, her torso with that, that big solid green. So looks, uh, yeah, wow, <laughs> happy. <laughs> uh, I'm also really happy that Donald did, like, a volcano section because I wanted to work on a character that was kind of lava themed. I haven't gotten around to it yet, but I had that in mind. Good. Ooh, that would be interesting. Have like armor <laughs> plates with molting lava under them. Yeah. Oh, I should have um, pulled up my lava ape. I forgot about that one. Click the bottom one. Yep. That's what I just <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Donald. See how awesome Donald is? <laughs> This is just kind of more body work with the kind of longer exaggerated look and more work with the tattoos. Just seeing how it looks. I like, me personally, I, I like tall, slender women. <laughs> that probably won't eat me. But uh, I like the thinner look. And we're not set on that by any means, but it gives a very alien-esque looking 
You think yeah, about it. Look at all I the thought. supermodels. Look at all the damn supermodels out there. They, have they look big like eyes. aliens. <laughs> yeah, they're thin. They have no body fat on them. You shave one of their heads. I'm not surprised if it doesn't pop out. And she's like, ah. You know, Britney Spears did shave her head once. <laughs> she did. Poor Brit. And something exactly. alien esque did pop out. Exactly. Ooh, well done. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. All right. This was more work with the um, kind of tattoos, kind of seeing what you could do with the face. The thing that I want to caution about, because she looks good, but we got to make sure that she looks alien, because right now she's looking yep. a lot like a dark elf or a night elf, which is okay for this, this stage of the concepts. Uh, we actually talked about last night different positions of the ears, uh, mm -hmm. meaning different things. We won't have any lopsided ears or anything like that, but um, for our cast system. And uh, again, maybe the ears are just straight up and down. That, that's the royalty, because I, I like for a person to be able to see hey, oh, that character is part of the world. She's a, a magi. or Anyway, we'll dwell into that later. But I love her tattoos. Very pretty. It, it, on the subject of the ears, uh, I was thinking about it as, as we talked last night about the drooping in that and trying to get a more alien look. It might go horribly awry, but what if you offset the ears positioning to begin with? Maybe. We can Maybe. try it. It just yeah, costs you a drawing. I mean, this is where we're at. Constant. Yeah. You know, also, we, we kind of accept where ears should be on a human-esque head, and elves fall under that. If you know, if, if the ears are springing up two inches lower or two inches higher or something, that it might dramatically change the look. It might be terribly ugly too. But <laughs> <laughs> another idea I've got for your characters is to show a little bit more bone structure under the skin. That may help give it a little bit more alien look to it. I agree. Very gaunt. <laughs> yeah. We can always work on stuff. You're doing great, Sid. For me this is on. another kind of headdress thing that I kind of did with. I like Because that. most of my characters have so much hair, and if it just hung down, it would kind of hide the head. So I drew this kind of showing that, you know, the head is alien-esque. That is beautiful. I love the color choices, and I love the idea of the headdress. And you're absolutely right. Well done. Looks Thank like Mystique. You. <laughs> <laughs> love the eyes. I like Mystique. Exactly. She would be awesome for an alien. <laughs> she doesn't fix scrambled eggs worth of poop, though. We've already had this discussion, Mystique, and I, and I had to kick her out several times. So <laughs> let's not talk about her. It really breaks my heart. <laughs> anyway, continue. Yep, you know, this is another one with the head dressings. For some reason, I keep going to like animal skulls. I don't know why, but it's kind of like a giant bird esque thing. Nothing wrong with that. Those are some good ideas. It is very tribal. Mm -hmm. Yep. I like it. All right. This I just did right before class, kind of thinking the underwater creature and kind of like the electric eel thing. Ooh. You could use like lightning underneath. The water. It's maybe. electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. <laughs> you, you can slap me for that one, Steve. <laughs> no, no, but I am holding the bridge of my nose. <laughs> okay. I really like that idea. I love the webbing between the fingers and the toes. Well done. I like the color choice, too. And the, even the background, it looks like she's immersed in water. Well done. It, it reminds me of some of the old, like, Diablo chain lightning, which would be really cool underwater. Depends yeah, on whose side know. you're on. <laughs> you're getting a shot at you. It kind of sucks. Well, the, I mean, the way the chain lightning would jump to multiple end of it, that would be really cool underwater. It would be brilliant. Looking, anyway. <laughs> brilliant. brilliant. Might, might not want to be on the receiving end, but it would look cool. Indeed, yeah, and well with, done. And with Donald's idea of seaweed kind of being like more of an armor thing, if we choose to have you know, a lot less hair or even no hair, then the seaweed would apply more better that way. Seaweed shoes. <laughs> seaweed toilet <laughs> oh, paper. Yes. Check out my seaweed converse. No chafing. <laughs> you guys aren't right at all. <laughs> very left, don't have to be right. very left of right. Very true. <laughs> we just have to be yeah. good. That's right. So you got to be any more for us, Sid, because it's a lot oh, yeah. right here. 
awesome. This is Chelsea's. She gave me some stuff since she couldn't be here. I love her eyes. That they, they would open up that big to be able to let light in for night hunting. I'm very nocturnal. I like the position of her eyes, or ears as well, a little bit lower and not as... But again, that's what I was thinking. Maybe this could be like a slave class. Their ears are lower at the mm -hmm. angle is not as abrupt. But she's that's really good. All right, this is another one of Chelsea's. All right, she's saying, where's my seaweed converse at, bitches? <laughs> <laughs> I like the pose. I love, and believe it or not, uh, my monster I did for Heavy Cat Studios, I remember looking at her picture, and I, I loved how she did the toenails, so I ripped her off and used that style of toenails <laughs> in the master effects. <laughs> you can tell her that. It's the, deep, it's the deepest form of flattery, man. Yeah. I, I like um, how, uh, we're, we're, again, she's on her, her tippy toes, and that... Uh, little third toe back there that looked now can you imagine okay listen this is for all you guys and I'm gonna get married one day out there i love my wife but man in the winter time when she puts her feet on me oh my god <laughs> i can imagine being in bed with one of these elysian chicks and she rolls over and scratches her crap out of you like baby you need a pedicure at least put your c-word converse on shit <laughs> okay. Um, I did also like that uh, you had talked about the different hairstyles, uh, the Mohawk styles, and Chelsea jumped right on that. That's it's beautiful, Sydney. Very beautiful. And, and, and I want to give credit where credit's due. Wolf Knightley, I don't know if he's in here tonight, but uh, that was his idea, and I agree with him, to have tufts of hair, a little bit of hair, but uh, too, and maybe the, the royal baddie bad mama can have, like, full head of hair. She can wear a beautiful headdress. But I like the idea where, uh, you know, it's not human at all. Yeah. And it does and Wolf, take away that night elf look. Yeah. Yeah. And Wolf actually, um, he had a picture that he wanted to show after I finished all this so he could talk about it. Is Wolf on tonight? Yep. Brilliant. <laughs> this is a headdress of Chelsea's, too. I like that. I love that, that sharp, angular facial feature for his nose. Very nice. Very pointy. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> and even the ear. I mean, because if, uh, as an artist, looking at, at people's ears, I'm watching, okay, don't make fun of me, but it's a really cool show, uh, G.I. Joe Renegades. It's like 26 episodes on Netflix. The storyline's awesome. They explain how they get their stupid names, like Snow Job and Roadblock. Uh, they handle it great. Uh, but their ears really bother me, and it's awesome to see how other artists draw ears. And I'm really pleased in how she made that ear right there. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. This is another one of hers. I think this is the last one of hers. Okay. Beautiful eyes. I like the cat eye look. That would be good for night. Have them glow in the dark a little. <laughs> that could be really a good special effect for... Uh, for gaming mechanics. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know how you do about the luminosity or what a specular roll off, blah, blah, blah. It's been forever since I've said stuff like that, but I think it would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Will you tell her well done? Tell her I that, will tell uh, her well done. I will not beat her with a wet noodle next time I see her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, she does good. Hey, let's bring Wolf in here. Is it, who's this? This is mine. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were done. My bad. My bad. Oh, my no. <laughs> sorry, I did a lot. No, no, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, in a normal environment, if this was, we were all in a, like a meeting place, all this stuff would be up on the walls all the time. And it makes me sad we can't do that, but we all live in different locations, so this is the best thing we can. But I just imagine a wall full of your artwork. That would be awesome. Yeah. So we anyway, explain about Kermit here. Walls. Kermit. Kermit. Well, I just figured that I should try some male designs, even though I don't like to. This is, again, working with jewelry and working with colors and tattoos, really. I like him. He's not big and super buff like uh, the one guy I showed you earlier today, like the, the bouncer at all. <laughs> Maybe we have a couple of those guys like that, but if they're going to live... Yeah, I, guess I figured it really depends be different sizes. What environment they live in. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't picture a big fatty fat person living underwater. I mean, you're swimming all the freaking time. Yeah, you should be in great shape. 
Yeah, um, I did. I did really like the uh, the angular placements on the head too. Yes. Yeah, it kind of stuck with that kind of pine cone thing we talked about at the very beginning, for the guys at least. Well done. Make them. This is another one, a little more buff, kind of reversed colors. But. I work out. <laughs> I like it. The hand's a little yeah, flat. I'm going to pick you on you for that. The, the forehand is yeah. flat. Too. But other, and he's got some great dancer legs, baby. I mean, look at those thighs. I've been in cats yeah. seven times. I think he's a professional tree climber. Yeah, I think so. Calves. Really well done. Seriously. I won't give any more crap. I love uh, <laughs> the arm bands. Again, we talk, and I want Mr. Ray to think about the bands and the arms. Does one mean you're this? Does two mean you're that? Where the placements are at? Kind of visual cues. So when you're playing the game, you can see a guy with three bands on his arm. Oh, he's a slave class. Or, oh, he's a ranger because it's set over here. I'm just throwing out words to throw them out, but I like it. Well done, Chelsea. I I'm did sorry. like Sydney. I did like Donald's idea with the uh, with the changing colors of the stones too. Maybe it doesn't denote like going into rage or something, but maybe you know uh, where they're from or what level they are at based on the colors of the stones they're using. It's a great well, idea. Speaking of the colors of stones, I made this guy before I kind of heard Ray's kind of story and stuff, thinking he would be a big baddie with all these stones embedded in his skin. And when I finished, I thought he looked kind of silly with all the colors. So I changed it saying Ooh, if they cast nice. certain spells, they would turn the color of the spell because quite a few people actually said they had that same idea. Mm, I like that. A good idea for a story plot would be maybe he tried to take over the stones too much and they started kind of melting with his body and taking over his body. Maybe. Oh, yeah. The, it's the, the silicon life forms are uh, yeah, using into the, their well now. Yeah, using the other color scheme with all the different colors. Maybe he tried to harness too much power and it just took him over. Yeah. Corrupted him. Be I, awesome idea. <laughs> I worked out. I'm alien and I know what. <laughs> gonna probe you. I know. Any, anyway. Oh, oh yeah, God. I drew up some weapons just kind of oh. playing around. Good girl. You should have sent those to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, back I just did it today. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, Mr. Steve? What do you think of her weapons? Then? Um, I like it. I like the very kind of uh, reverse Batleth one on the on the right. <laughs> I like the sharp angles because, again, if we're going to make these aliens very angular in features and stuff, uh, my favorite is probably the very top. Uh, if you look at the blade, it could almost be cut from stones. Uh, really good job. I love the handle and the, the sword in the bottom left. Well done, girl. you got a definite future in this. Thank you, sir. So right when you now, become an intern at Buzz's it. house, yeah. you're going to still have to do time, <laughs> okay, on this stuff. All right. Well done. Yeah, I'm proud of me. you. Let's get Wolf in here because you're his representative, and I want you guys, I want to hear you guys talk back and forth and see if he has any ideas and vice versa. How's that? Yep, he's got ideas. <laughs> Mr. Producer, Mr. Nelson, can you get Wolf Knightley in here pretty please? Oh. Hey, man, how you doing, dude? I'm doing well. How are you? Well, I'm going to say fine between having bathroom breaks. I told you, if you, if you hear my, <laughs> oh, my yeah. headphones are... <laughs> yeah. I'm making Sorry. Chelsea or Sid sick. I think she gave us a, a virus over the internet the other day. I have right. to Kapersky it out. Internet viruses. Yeah. I've heard about them. I heard about them. Hey, so yeah. tell me what's going on with you and your idea for the alien. I love I love the shadows that you have here. Oh, yeah. This is, this is my first attempt at doing this bot black silhouette style that you taught us uh you know without just following what you do so i i you know i, I was trying to do it to, to speed up my workflow because my workflow is very slow and it, i think this first one it actually slowed down my workflow a little bit but but i think it's good because i learned some things but that was good. i think that was mainly just because i i was not really sure what I was doing, so I was just kind of figuring you it out. guys tell Chelsea about this to put it in her pipe and smoke that because she hates about blacks. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, it, it, I think I've learned some stuff, and it's, it's, so I, I think I'm going to keep trying it. I think eventually it's going to be second nature to you. 
And I, I, don't get me wrong, I don't want to sound like a perv or a freak, but I like her breasts. They're not overly big. They don't look fake and comic booky like I draw. I love her ab work. I love the shadow in the nether region area. But I also like the subtle hints that she's very muscular in her legs. That's well done, sir. Thank you. Yeah, and very proportionate. I like yep. it. That's, uh, yeah, you said all the, the things that I liked about it. Uh, I, I had a thought for uh, Sunni's, uh, uh, the, the alien with the, the, what are we calling the magic rock things? Do we call them crystals or something? Mr. Ray, do you have any idea? What? Is, is Ray still on here? Does he have any? I'm thinking stones because uh, I'm, I'm not sure that we'd facet them. I'm not sure they'd stand for that. But I'm so I'm thinking things with veins of different colors through them, and this, we use the stones pretty much as as we find them. So I'm just saying stones myself. Okay. So that's so the fine. stones. That, that doesn't mean it has to be that way. Right. Okay. I, so you, you'll know what I'm talking about if I just say stones. Yes. <laughs> All right. So the the stones that are uh, fusing themselves with the uh, that alien's body. It's uh, another idea is that, that that could actually be somebody else um, somehow setting that person up, like uh, giving them uh, kind of booby trapped, you know, setting some kind of spell, you know, if you will. <laughs> uh, a cool attack that, for a PvP that, is having someone throw small stones at somebody coming at them. And they like oh, infuse oh, like the body a, or blow like up. debuffs that that stick on. Yeah, it's <laughs> <That'd be laughs> kind idea. of a visual thing. But yeah, Ooh. all right. So then this is oh well, yeah. I, I this took me a long time. So I figured once I did this, I kind of have a, a mannequin where I can just dress it with different stuff. No, that's great. Paper doll theory. That's what yeah. you need to do. So far, I've only been able to do one. I thing. like that, dude. This. Wow. This, thanks. Is I it, love the headdress. Pretty. I'll shut up now. Sorry. Go ahead. Is it, yeah, that's right. This is. Uh, I'm kind of thinking of this as a priest, as a priestess, but not not a, the kind of priestess that we kind of think of, but it more of like a, a scholar, one that's studied, devoted their lives into studying uh, the magic arts and stuff. You know, kind of a, an upper class person who who is strong in the power and. You know, yeah, so maybe I like she it. could apply to the shaman area. Yeah, it could be shaman. Sh yeah, I was thinking that too when you said shaman. That's uh, mm -hmm. that's a, another good name for it because it's not it's not a, a, a religious type thing. It's you know it's just about uh, about you know study it, knowledge. What my call my concept? Yeah, just getting good with this and okay. and because because that the power as 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 I as I see it the you know. The greater you are in the power, that the, the higher up you are in the civilization, because uh, because I mean the power is about control and stuff in it. So even if you can do great things with the power, then it's like why are you following some person who can you know barely make a spark? <laughs> you know, uh, true. So so I, I think that that people who are high in the power would be the kind of the high, uh, the ruling class more, and people who are uh, lesser in the power uh, would be more the commoners and, and stuff. So that's that's the way I've been looking at it. So so that's why it it's she, she's you know you call her a priest or a shaman or something, but she's you know upper class. That's why you know she's she's kind of she looks like like an upper class person, not just some. Do you know how you can tell she's an upper class person? She doesn't have crap all over. <laughs> like the rest of Hell no, I'm being repressed. Right. <laughs> well done. Um, um, okay, and here's, here's, here's another idea. It's hard to see for what. Um, Criteria. slow. <laughs> yes, down, yes, Donald. Thanks, down. Donald. Oh, Donald! Uh, <laughs> quickly, they fall. We were all thinking that he just was man enough. <laughs> uh, nice. 
Uh, okay, I these these power thing. You know, you know, this is my idea from way back where that they would uh, jewelry would be would hold uh, the stones in there because they would want to they would want to uh, show people and kind of uh, impress them with with uh, you know it'd be a display of their power and um, prestige and uh, so then my thought was uh, it'd be nice like I I just tried uh, the concept right here is that there's like silver casing around that and uh, and um, that this the stone is not in the shape of a star here it's actually just it's it's still the regular shape okay. but I, I just thought they might uh, they might add some casing to kind of make little shapes to represent things and so up here I have a star here I have a moon then uh, I, like that. I have and we, and we definitely what? talk about the I, no, I, I like that we definitely talk about ideas part of me I, I agree with what uh, Ray was saying that the stones will not allow themselves to be fasted but who's to say the stones don't have different levels of power maybe the more powerful stones have to be uh, directly into people's flesh and they bury themselves in here and can't be removed almost like a permanent slot for upgrading stuff in uh, World of Warcraft and then your magic stuff if you craft you can utilize different stones that are not as powerful I mean, side is maybe you but, could have a uh, higher like jewel crafters with a higher skill level maybe they can use certain materials to actually socket those gems and form them that's a good idea or the jewelry can harness the power more like you can equip a certain necklace maybe and it can draw more power out of the crystal or the stone I like that, and I love the the, the finger ring you got there. Yeah. <laughs> well, or maybe, or maybe with Ray's idea of uh, the silicates maybe not being too keen on you hammering away on the stones, uh, maybe certain progressions in magic allow you to uh, simply request more powerful and more highly faceted stones from them. Yeah, I, I think you could coax the stones into shaping themselves. I just don't think they'd want us taking chisels to them. Not that they're that smart, but you don't take a chisel to a bear, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, the, these guys are all uh, magical creatures. Magically who delicious. Get, who get, yeah, exactly. Um, and they're a great breakfast cereal. And uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they probably wouldn't really need to use tools that is something that Zach used to always say I mean it that uh, I mean they can they can craft things with with their magic so it can be kind of more elegantly crafted that way uh, yeah well, I just think they look cool you know I think people I mean I think that's a, a cool thing to have uh, these glowing uh, changing colored glowing magical things I, I think people would rather see them than have them be invisible but uh it's also it's also like i mean who who knows what a stone would uh you know even a sentient stone would would care may, may, you know maybe it likes the security and the warmth and maybe it likes to be uh connected precious a, a symbiotic <laughs> relationship there you know i mean it's just like it it's not necessary i mean it it, 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 it not necessarily would be feeling objectified by that you know so that's kind of putting our standards on that i mean I, I wouldn't i wouldn't want to be on someone's arm like that but you know i don't okay. know she's really hot i maybe <laughs> i'm just that's me but go ahead what else uh, Chelsea, i want to hear from you too uh, damn it sorry sid whenever you uh, <laughs> i want to hear you give you know feedback to uh to him too and i'll be quiet go ahead i'm sorry um, well he knows the, i like it that in all the it, talks go ahead you <laughs> know in all the talks of the stone, I don't want to uh, lose all of the filigree in that uh, jewelry either. That is a really great representation of it is. of someone of a much higher class. That's not something you're going to see on a starting character. And right. I think that's a great idea. And yeah, not every stone has to be magic. jewelry was amazing. Beautiful. What, what Beautiful. was that? Was it, did you say Sydney? What? What? Do I need to repeat myself? Yeah. 
What the hell? I like the jewelry. <laughs> really, you like Sid? Jewelry. You give her a little bit of power. I know. Well, you, see, you see what I'm saying? You see how she treats me? <laughs> I will beat you. <laughs> Wow. Well, where do you live at, man? Nowhere near her state, right? Because I don't want her to drive over and like, knock on the door and then bam. This right here, I thought, represented like a tree of life. This of Alethean itself. And I thought some of these other ones I didn't, I didn't do, but they could be um, uh, like other animals. Like this could be bird and this, you know, down there on the legs could be... Uh, uh, land animals, and it just, just I thought the concept was it just kind of symbolizes their their mastery over their universe there, you know, so like everything. That. Well done. It could also tie into the symbols that we're going to do for uh, elements, have them actually form into the symbols of whatever element the mage is using or whatever. Yeah. I like that. Maybe when someone's casting a spell, if the jewel's big enough for you to see... Maybe the jewel itself wouldn't change the shape, but it would glow out the image of like a flame or a leaf or a water yeah. droplet saying which elemental like spell when, they're about to use. Like when you're oh, yeah. debuffing or you're buffing up, that's a great idea. Of course, I'm not but, sure you would, you would be able to see that kind of detail very easily in yeah. the game, but it's still a neat idea. Um, okay. Do, uh, do you want to see the, another thing? Or, yeah. Okay. Um, this was just a, another concept to like b kind of bring the hairline back, so you could still have more hair, but uh, you still see the the shape. I gotta be honest. She reminds me of Larry from the Three Stooges. Yeah, I know. It's it, it's not it's not the greatest thing, but I mean, it can be done in different ways. And, I could. Yeah. Uh, um, I was also thinking that it, maybe it. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why would you love that? Uh, just, just Larry. Anyway, uh, uh, it's making it very difficult for me. Uh, uh, yeah, I was also thinking that this could uh, this could be like uh, a hor horizontal mohawk in a way that hair could grow in a strip. <laughs> there <laughs> and i'm kind of i'm kind of it's kind of it was actually uh you know i was thinking about because i was i was still thinking about i don't know if maybe we're doing uh, we might test out some kind of um feathery type hair you know feathers type growing um but i was kind of thinking of a peacock kind of thing and so that would be nice. you know, may, maybe you could also do that with hair and so that's kind of what I was thinking. But, I, you know, this is just a quick thing, and it, I know it doesn't No, I like it. Throw out ideas right now. There's no right, wrong, or otherwise. But, uh, Very good. So this is the part of the night that we say that our uh, art leads need to hand out assignments or uh, work. And if you guys want to be involved – actually, let me, let me take this back. Mr. Nelson, if you can look in the chat panel, if there's any questions, I want to be able to open it up to uh, the people that are here. Um, no, I do not see any questions. Um, at some point, Richard said, uh, wish I could partake and show off the spells there in Derek's Dropbox, but unfortunately I don't have a mic connected to my work computer. I might, oh crap, I'm not sure I can get to my Dropbox in a moment. I took cough medicine and it really started to affect me. Let me brag on Richard for a second, too. Uh, Richard is going to be in charge of our magic. And he's using, I believe, Max, and he's modeling everything and throwing, like, after effects. And the, the fireballs are amazing. And the gaseous-type spells are brilliant. I mean, I, I have high hopes for this game with the people and team assembled so far. And whenever Richard gets back, he can be on again. We'll, or this next week, I'll go ahead and pull up all the stuff in the Dropbox and uh, make sure he, everyone gets to see that because he's done a fantastic job. I, I don't want to cut him short or uh, disrespect him in any way. He's awesome. So with that, you guys need to go to 3dbuzz.com. Go to the forums. You're going to see design in the MMO. There will be different little forums or little threads that you can talk about. Character design, magic, environment, weapons. I want you to go there now. Do it. Do it now. And um, sign up and be part of the team. 
Um, Derek or uh, Nelson, if you'd like to switch over to me, I've uh, pulled up Richard's stuff. And oh, brilliant. He, Thank he you. He won't be here to talk about it, but we can at least uh, show through him. Definitely. Thank you. Ooh. And uh, I think some of this stuff uh, was based off of our talks about having like a poisonous mist type thing, if memory serves. Mm -hmm. Be good for a necromancer. Yeah. <laughs> Love necromancers. Dead things. We need to seek therapy for you, son. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, large fireball spell. Fireworks. Nice. Uh, the same one with motion blur, it looks like. And what I asked Richard to do was under the, the, the character concept template body 2, in the forms, that's a mouthful to say. What he's going to do, he's going to render these out with an alpha background and a PNG. And that was Steve's idea. I said JPEG. PNG is good. So what you guys and gals can do is get the template, put that in Photoshop, design your character, put tattoos, yada, yada, yada. And then you can take these special effects that are being used now that he'll be able to use. You can import them in and manipulate them around your screen. That way, we all have the same look, you know, cursory look starting out. And of course, if you have other looks, throw throw that out as well. Uh, right now, there's no right, wrong, or otherwise. That's a damn cool look. I hate to be that guy being shocked. Chain lightning. I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, and there was a small uh, spell cloud type. That's what I'm afraid I'm going to do later on. Come out the other. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but there you go. Well done, Richard. I'm proud of you. So, do we have any questions, comments, concerns? I'm concerned about my dog. He's lifting weights and dropping them. He's trying to work out. A dog got it? <laughs> so, if Mr. I don't the next class, you know why. <laughs> Mr. Nelson, do we have any questions or any hands up? I do not see any questions, no. Okay. Uh, we will be perusing uh, the web channel, uh, 3D Buzz, uh, the forum channel. I'm sorry, that's, yeah. To see if anyone else wants to sign up, post your questions and comments in there. I'm sure the leads will have other things to do for their uh, the workers, their team. And it is not on so many comments or, uh, on the teams right now. Got anything, Donald? Uh, yeah, uh, I can start thinking of some uh, weapon concepts. Uh, oh, awesome probably start doing that tomorrow if you want me to. Uh, my workload's getting easier by the day. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Should have no, th that would be great. Um, and uh, I suppose kind of just the same thing as you were doing. Um, you know, keep it rough, keep it lively. I love the color palettes. Yeah. Um, if you want to keep going with uh, the environments, if you want to start to maybe detail out some more ideas, that would be great. Yeah, will do. Brilliant. Mr. Ray, if you, as soon as you can, I, I didn't see if you got to put any of uh, your typed beautiful words on 3D Buzz, but get those up there so people can start reading and they can comment and his leads will come back and we'll talk about, you know, other ideas as well, if that's cool with you. Uh, I already posted uh, one on uh, the magic concept and a second post in the design area on the uh, cast system. Nice. nice. Well, you're ahead of my curve. I'm sorry I was throwing, I'm not throwing up the other thing today. I didn't get to see it. So well done. So I'm, and I'm open to any and all uh, comments, suggestions. Uh, you hate it, uh, you love it, whatever. But if you do that, if you say this sucks, tell me why it sucks and, and be thorough. Don't just be mean and say this sucks. Uh, homie, don't play that game. What I want us to do is create a community and a place that we can grow together. If you don't like something, be articulate without being mean and then throw suggestions. I am a firm believer if you're going to come to my table and sit down with me and say, you suck at this, this, and this, you better come up with a solution and bring at least one to the table how we can correct this. Absolutely. Otherwise, you're blowing smoke up my butt. I don't like that. So with that said, let's all be nice to each other and bring solutions and not condemnation. Huh? Hoo-ha. <laughs> right. Ooh. Miss Sid, you got anything to say? Um, well, Wolf, do you have anything you plan on working on? Yeah, you wanted me to work on headdresses. 
Yeah, yeah, I was going to see if you already... had anything planned, otherwise I would assign you something. I like the idea of headdresses, because what oh. Sid is going to do is she's going to lock down on myself for lockdown a side profile of an Aletheian. Uh, we'll, I'll have two different ear shapes, she'll have two different ear shapes. That way we can start making kind of paper dolls for the heads, and we can start saying, okay, this is definitely the look that we want. So Sid will draw several face, front profile, side profile, and I'll do the same. And then as we meet with as art leads next week, we can you know, say, okay, these are the one or two that we want to use. And then we can put the paper dolls up on 3D Buzz so then everyone can have the same working, I guess, template. And then we have the same look across the board and we can start creating some cool kick-ass stuff. Great, I like that. With that in mind, uh, Donald, let's keep working right now on just general world environments. And then once we kind of have the Elysians locked down, then we'll start to deal with uh, what cities or villages or stuff like that might look like, because that could affect what we do. Yep. Words of your mama. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting awesome kind of loopy. Kids. Thank you guys and gals for participating. And Mr. Nelson, how many are in class at this very moment who are not talking? At this very moment, we have eight. Eight, and we have like four people talking. So that means four people are not talking. I'm talking to you four right now. And you may not have a microphone, so if that's the case, ignore. But I really want you guys to participate. I'm going to take the reins a lot and uh, for drawing. We are going to draw kind of like a drawing class every now and then. And so have other people, because there's a lot of great styles and a lot of great talent here. But this is not a drawing class. Uh, the new drawing class will hopefully will be starting soon. I think we've agreed to do a fantasy drawing class, which I'm excited about, and we'll get more information out there. But this is going to be our game. So I want you guys to participate. There's no right, wrong, or otherwise silly you know, questions. I really encourage you to get to those forums. Raise your hand and uh, participate. Otherwise, kittens will cry all over the world. You do not want that. <laughs> Noah Wiley taught me how to do that, my acting buddy. We're BFFs now. All right, with that, then, we will close it down tonight. Uh, everybody's got contact information. Uh, say by, we'll do the same thing next Wednesday, lead team, is that good with you? Have your, your peeps have everything in on Wednesday and we'll meet and then we'll go everything on Thursday. Awesome. Alright. All right, sounds awesome, good. Blossom. You guys have a great night. Keep your feet on the ground, your ankles slightly above them. This is Derek T. Stevens. T stands for Too Good to Be True, signing out. You ladies and gentlemen, take yourselves out and say goodbye. Say goodbye, oh, Gracie. Good night, everybody. Say good night. Sid. Good night. Good night, John boy. Other card. See ya. <laughs> See you tonight, Sydney. <laughs> Mr. Wolf Knightley. Oh, Wolf Man Jack. Right. <laughs> all right, really, we're out of here. You guys be good. I look forward to seeing all your work. I, again, really appreciate everybody. I'm going to bed after he's about in the potty. Good night. Good night. <laughs> good night, guys.